Okay, so I have an open intelligence. Yep. Show me where Jesus said, I am God, worship me. I got it. It's a very, very simple. Wait, wait, hold on. Let me, let me. Yeah, in fact, it's a question I have. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Can I? Let me see this one. Watch this one. You bring, you bring I do have a criteria. You bring goals after you. Let me see this one quick. A criteria. So and you must say. meet this criteria, both of you. Right? The criteria is one. Let me go this one first, please. That, the criteria has no to be one. Let me see this one. Let me see this first. Because no, 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 right? he's just going to argue. The criteria must be unambiguous. Meaning, it should not be open up to interpretation. Right? It has to be clear cut. That's the criteria I stand by. Mm. So you cannot just quote a verse where it could be opened up to ambiguity or explanation. So show me a verse that's clear cut, unambiguous, and let me clear say this one. Point. Let me make it. Let me, let me say this one. You can both answer. Uh, all right, my he'll go with one okay, so first of all, in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 48, verse 12, my friends. This is Yahweh speaking to um, to Isaiah. He says. Listen to me, Jacob, Israel, whom I have called. I am he. I am the first and I am the last. My own hand laid the foundations of the earth and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I summon them, they all stand up together. So this is in the Old Testament in Isaiah before the incarnation where Christ says this to, um, is, um, to Isaiah that he is the first and the last. Now, if we look at Revelation 22, verse 13, this is what Jesus Christ says to Apostle John. Let's get to Revelation 22, 13. Benny, if you wouldn't mind, I'll, I'll use mine as well. You go on, you go on. Yeah, yeah. So in Revelation 22, verse 13, Jesus Christ says this, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. One minute, who calls himself the first and the last in the Quran? In Surah 57, Allah calls himself the first and the last. Now this is Jesus Christ, not only does he call himself the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, meaning an eternal prospect of Jesus Christ. But he also calls himself the first and the last, which is a divine attribute class to Yahweh in the Old Testament. And now this man is going to go to Melchizedek about him being the first and last. But my friend, Melchizedek had no genealogy. So it cannot have been about, it cannot have been about an eternal being about, uh, of Melchizedek. So when Jesus says he's the first and the last, this clearly shows that he is a divine being, my friend. Yes, and I just want to quickly go to go my... Ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so in Luke chapter 6, verse mm. 46, it says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Mm. Now, the Lord, Lord, the Greek word there is kulios, kulios. And if you go to 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 58, it's the same kulios, kulios. And throughout the whole Old Testament, you see kulios, kulios being referred to as the Father. So he's clearly saying, people are calling him the Almighty God and they're not doing as they say. So he's questioning, why do you call me God and do not act accordingly? So clearly it shows a precedent that people are worshipping Jesus. Yeah. Is, that, is that your answer? Is that what you're yeah. Right, let me respond. Okay. Now, first of all, right, what's your name? Ash? Ish. 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 What's your name? Thomas. Thomas. You know what? You no, know, sorry, when I had Thomas, you know Thomas the Tank Engine. Sorry, when I was small, I was just a tank. Yeah, I'm not taking a the mix. Anyway, right. So I got a really good one. He said, Ash said, Ish, sorry, Ish. Ish said, he quoted the Quran, right? Where Allah says, "Who will Awal that He is the first, and Who will Akhir that Allah the is last. the last?" Yeah, we don't dispute that. Of course, God is the first and the last. Before yeah. God, there is no one, mm -hmm. and after God, no one exists. God is the first and the last. We have no issues with this. Now he quoted the Old Testament where it says in Isaiah that God, Yahweh, right? You quoted Yahweh. Does anyone in the New Testament call Jesus Yahweh? I challenge you. So he, Pretty, no, hold on, let me finish. Did you not say in the Old Testament that it was Yahweh that it will be the first and the last? Sorry. Yahweh is Jesus. It? Right. Show me in the New Testament okay. that any of the disciples refer to Jesus as Yahweh. That's, that's number one. That's challenge number one. Mm -hmm. Show me in the New Testament where Jesus is referred to as Yahweh to show that this is speaking about Jesus in the Old Testament. Right? Number one. Number two. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, when Moses went to, came to God, he went towards God and he said, 
when I go to the children of Israel, who should I say sent me? What was? How did God respond to Moses? He says, "Ehye, Esher, Ehye." And some commentators say, "Ehye, Esher, Yahweh," which is actually referring to the Father. This is speaking about not Jesus. But if he insists that this is speaking about Jesus, show me in the New Testament that is that Jesus is referring to Jesus is referred to as Yahweh in the, in the New Testament. That's number one. Okay. Number two, he quoted Melchizedek, and he says. Well, this is speaking about that Melchizedek has no genealogy. Yeah, of course. But he also says he has no beginning of life. Yes. Neither end of day. Read it for yourself. Open it up. Mel uh, Hebrews chapter 7 verse 1. It says that Melchizedek is king of Salem, priest of the Most High. No mother, right? He has no mother and no father. No beginning of days. Hmm. No end of life. You forgot that part. He forgot to because there's no part. genealogy. No, hold on. So he has no beginning of days and life. Show me in the verse that he's speaking that where it says without beginning of days or end of life, it's referring to genealogy. Show me that in Isaiah. So show me that in um, Hebrews seven verse one. Also, in addition to that, he said that Jesus said in Revelation that I am the first and I am the last. Okay, right. let's examine that. Did Jesus die on the cross? Of course he did. Yes. That actually proved that Jesus cannot be the first and the last. Did he, was he born from a human mother? Of course. So he had a beginning of days. Did Jesus die after 33 years of his existence? Yeah, he did. He died on the cross. So how does that constitute him having no beginning of days, no end of life? In fact, I can show you someone greater than that. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 23, the wisdom of God has been personified into a person. What does that mean in Hebrew? In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 23. Open it up for yourself. Yeah. What I asked you. So what do you ask me? What does it mean in Hebrew? The word about the word about the, the wisdom being there with God. What does that mean in Hebrew? No, but the, yeah, me, what does it mean in Hebrew? Because it means it means possessed. Jesus is the eternal wisdom which the Father possessed from the beginning Proverbs. of time. Yeah. That's okay. what it means. I have a challenge for the verse I presented to you. Okay, I will. But okay, I want to speak now. First of all, you talked about why isn't Jesus called Yahweh in the New Testament? First of all, because Yahweh was a Yahweh was used as in the terms of the Hebrew language, and in the Old Testament, we clearly see Jesus in Genesis 35 and Genesis 19:24, where Jesus is described as Yahweh. Okay, we also see in the Old Testament where the Father has an eternal Son, who um, such as in Proverbs 30 verse 4, it says this: "Who has ascended to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in his fist?" Who has wrapped up the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? Though Jesus may not be referred to Yahweh because of the language barriers, he's also referred to the eternal son in the New Testament. So if you're going to say that Jesus, where, where, does, this, where does he say that Jesus is, um, is Yahweh in the New Testament? You have to look at other titles, which he, in the Old Testament it says he was, such as the first and the last, the Lord of the Sabbath, that he's referred to the Kyrios, which is in the New Testament, to refer, refer to as the eternal son and the um, wisdom of the father, you have to question that as well. Just because he's not referred to Yahweh in the New Testament does not debate, the, rebuke the fact that Jesus was not God. Because we also see other titles which I have said to you, which proves Jesus was God in the New Testament. Now well, with Melchizedek, for the, for the sake of argument, let's say if he had any, no genealogy, we also believe in something called the Christophany. Where such as in the Old Testament, Jesus revealed himself to many prophets, such as through the angel of the Lord. You know, Jesus revealed himself to many prophets, such as J to Jacob, to Abraham. So even if Melchizedek had no genealogy, some people may say that he was a Christophany, where it was in a pre-incarnate version meeting himself to Abraham. Okay? And I also want to bring up this verse about Jesus Christ being God. So first of all, as it says this in Proverbs 34, Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? Surely you know. Who is the son in the New Testament? We know that is Jesus Christ. He's the Monogenes, which means a unique son of God. Not just the son of God, but means a unique begotten son of God. Okay. And here it says this, my friend, in the book of Isaiah 48 verse 13, I want to bring it up. My own hand lay the foundations of the earth and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I summon them, they all stand up together. Okay. So remember this, it says this. My own hand lay the foundations of the earth. Okay. 
This is Yahweh speaking again in the Old Testament, okay? If you look at the book of Hebrews, chapter 110, the Father says this about the Son. In the beginning, Lord, Kyrios, you lay the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. So we see in the Old Testament where it says, where it says this, man, it says, it says this, it was my hand that laid the foundations of the earth. My right hand that spread out the heavens above. Who is the right hand of the Father? Who is sitting at the right hand of the Father? It is Jesus Christ. Now we see in the New Testament, as I said to you again, it was Jesus Christ created the heavens and the earth, which clearly proves myself, uh, clearly proves my friend that he was God. Yeah, right. uh, he wants okay. to and, Yeah, I want to, I want to respond to you and I'll go back to him. Right, so remember what the question, the, what, remember what I said in the beginning of this conversation, right? I said, show me an unambiguous verse. How right? is it ambiguous? This is, hold on one second. This was the criteria that I laid down in the beginning of this conversation. Show me an unambiguous verse that Jesus says, I am God, worship me. And you have not shown that. You have shown verses that I open up to ambiguity. Now you mentioned earlier about, did you mention that Jesus worshiped? Yeah, so in Luke chapter 6, verse 46, he says, why do you call me Kulios Kulios? Which is talking about, and we have, we have cross references from, for example, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 58, where the father is called Kulios Kulios. It means Almighty God. So I'm just curious why, why the disciples at the time were calling Jesus the Almighty God. And so that's not it, ambiguous as well. I want to see a syllogism how that is ambiguous. But you have, so hold on, are you saying that Jesus was called the Almighty God? Yeah, he was called Kulios Kulios. So show me in the New Testament where Jesus was referred to as Almighty God. Yeah, I got Kulios Kulios. That's talking about being no, God. Give me the verse of the New Testament yeah, where Jesus you. was... Because I have never seen a verse in the New Testament where Jesus is called when the Je Almighty God. The Almighty God in Hebrew is El Shaddai, right? Yes. The father was always called El Shaddai. No, he was referred to as Kulios Kulios. Look, okay, says, show me. why do you call me Lord, Lord? The Greek is Kulios Kulios. Okay, That's Lord. Talking about God. But Lord, hold on one no, second. Not, not just Lord, Lord, Lord. Kulios Kulios. Okay, I get it. I understand. Yeah. I get it. Right. But if you've been referred to as Lord. Not just Lord. Don't throw well, Hold on one second. You said Kulios Kulios. Yes. yes, yes. Right. If you've been called, if you've been referred to as Kulios Kulios, does that mean that Jesus is God? Yes. Because he was referred to as Kurios Kurios. And he said, no, the caveat is, and do not do what I say. He's responding, he said, you do not do what I say, but I'm clearly God. Show me, show, that's your interpretation. That's not my interpretation. Read, read, okay, read that whole please verse. Please tell me. Okay. Read that whole, whole verse. The whole chapter do you want? The... Just the verse that you were referring to. The one before and the one before. So you want the verse before and after? Yeah. What verse are you referring to? Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Oh, okay. Luke chapter? Uh, 6, verse 46. Um, which one is it? I'm going to call from my um, Bible study group. <laughs> Uh, 46. We look yes, for The good man out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. Is that right? Luke, Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Yeah, I'm reading from 45. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. The good man out of the good treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil man out of his, out of his evil treasure produces evil. Right? For out of the abundance of the heart of his mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord? Lord, and not do what I tell you? Right, so Jesus is, no, hold on a minute, <laughs> you're misunderstanding this completely. Jesus is saying, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not do what I say, right? So that's the caveat, so let's continue, right? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation upon a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream broke against the house. And that couldn't shake it because it had been uh, been well built. But he who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without foundation, against which the stream broke. So Jesus is given a parable. He's given an example. No, no hold on one second. Hold on. Let yeah, me respond to you. Right? Jesus is saying, 
Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't listen to what I say? And D, G, G, so the caveat is not the part where Jesus said, call me Lord, Lord. That's not the caveat. If someone, so Jesus called Kyrios Kyrios. It's not the caveat here because Jesus is not laying emphasis on yes. that caveat. No, he's not. And I'll tell you why. I will tell you why he's not laying emphasis on I'll that. I'll tell you how that's okay. Right? What you're doing is capitalizing in only two words here, which is Kyrios Kyrios and completely disregarded what Jesus' explanation to that was. Right? Jesus says, so Jesus likens a person who does not follow his examples to like a house been built with very shaky foundation. I'm just paraphrasing here. But for those who follow in the words of Jesus, in fact, when the Samaritan lady came to Jesus, Jesus said, um, the verse he says, he says, whoever shall follow my word shall not see death, right? He says, I am the resurrection and the life. That's the verse. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Who who follows my words? So Jesus is speaking about following his footsteps. He right. who follows my footsteps shall not see death. Now, of course, the disciples at the time all saw death. So it's meant to be understood in a parable. It's a spiritual right? death. It's Hold like it's seeing spiritual death one, one as second, nobody will second, see eternal second. fire. Let me finish. There's a spiritual finish. death and there's a physical death. Let me finish. That's what it is. Because you have misunderstood the verse. I'm, I'm telling you why you did. I, I can and you can respond. Wait, can I say something? No, 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 no. Let me finish. You I want to finish. I want to finish. You said about Jesus calling himself the Lord. He, Hold, Jesus no, did call no, himself the Lord. Hold on one second. One second. He did call himself the Lord. Let me finish. What I am saying to you is that you are putting great emphasis on two verses, two words that Jesus said, which is Kerios, Kerios, right? Which means Lord, Lord, right? There are other people in the New Testament that's called Lord. Even in the Old Testament, there are be people being yeah, referred to as Kerios. Yes. Yeah. Are you saying that they haven't? Yeah, so, like, uh, hold on, hold on, because you keep on saying things which ultimately counteract your point. So you said, I emphasize, but I don't actually mention the caveat or the context. Now he's saying, why do you call me Lord, Lord? Kulios, Kulios, not just one Kulios, 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 which means he's God. People are professing to the fact he is God. And he's saying, if you do what I say afterwards, the caveat you talked about, if you do what I say, you will be a wise man because you will confirm, you do the acts in accordance to your faith, that faith being he is Kulios, Kulios, and if you act in accordance to that belief, you will be a wise man. Now, why is he saying that? Because he's putting emphasis to his previous words. Mm. He is Kulios, Kulios, and follow me and do I as I say. say yeah. Because if you do as I say, you will be like, the wise man. Now, please tell me how I'm missing. I want to okay. bring no, something no, in. I want to. 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 And in the yeah. Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, what it says. because no, if you no, if, if you look at the Shema, it means here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And in the New Testament, Paul clearly says, "But there is one God, the Father, from whom all things came, and from whom we live. And there is but one Lord Jesus Christ." And what? So the Lord our God is one. Clearly confirms the statement which Paul okay, is making. And, right. and another thing I want to make, my friend, Jesus calls himself the Lord of the Sabbath. Okay, a Sabbath is a divine title given okay, to okay. Yahweh in the Old Testament. Right, me, it's given let, to let me, God in the Old let Testament. Let me if you can you say Muhammad is the Lord of Umrah? Can you say Muhammad is the Lord of Ramadan? Can you say Muhammad is the Lord of the five daily prayers? You cannot say that okay, because let, that would be respond. shirk. And by Jesus calling himself the Lord of the Sabbath. It clearly shows myself that Jesus was. Uh, clearly shows myself, uh, uh, my friend, that Jesus was God. Okay, right. So, notice he read a verse where Jesus said that there is only one God. Mm -hmm. There was only one God, and then there's one Lord. So there is a distinction. The Lord, our God is one. No, hold on one second. Let me finish. I didn't really interrupt you. There is a distinction between one God and one Lord. Now the question is, is the word Lord and the word God, is it synonymous? No, they're not. They in John 17 verse 3, let me finish. In John oh, 17 okay, verse 3, Jesus said that, 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 that this God is life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God. Hmm. The only true God, so that completely I just, I just refutes, John 17, 3, yeah. that completely oh, refutes your point. Now, the question we should be asking, what does the actual word Kyrios mean? 
Twice. What does it mean? Twice. What does it mean? Twice. Let don't show my position. It's twice. I, I heard you. Yeah. I heard you. Twice. You're wrong about John 17 verse 3. I heard you. Brother, you're wrong about John 17 verse 3, by the way. I heard you. Now let me finish. Right? Now, what does Lord mean? Let's get up the let's get the definition of the word Lord. Right? I also do want to clarify you can't quote somebody who is a Lord God. Uh, in the Christian theology, for example. God's a philosophy. Sorry, person. sorry, sorry, I haven't finished. I, I did I was patient for you to finish. I just need to finish my yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Lord means a man of noble rank a man of noble rank or high office a nobleman nowhere i challenge you even from the greek give me from the greek that the word kyrios means god from the from the greek lexicon show me from the greek lexicon that the word kyrios means god i challenge you okay, on this okay. that's number one number two no, i haven't finished i have not finished number two you mentioned where it says kyrios kyrios but I have explained to you that that is not the caveat. Jesus is given an example that why are you calling me Lord and you do not follow in what I tell you that you should do? And then he likened the example to a house with weak foundation. That is the example that he has given. But what you have done, you've only magnified just these two words. Curious, curious not taking into consideration that there are other people in the Old Testament that are also called We show you there's a distinguishment yeah. because there's one Lord. Of all the laws, Jesus Christ is that one Lord. One second. One second. You have not Paul taken makes a distinguishment. I'll show you, you have not taken into consideration that there are other people in the, New, in the Old Testament that are also called Lord, right? But you're not going to say that they are God. In fact, in fact, I have two more verses. I will. Then you can, I, I will. Hold no, hold on, I have two more. I have two. No, hold on. I have two more things I want to say, and you can respond. Yeah. Right. Daniel was worshipped. Daniel was worshipped. Is he God? He was respected by Nebuchadnezzar. In Daniel chapter two, verse. 46, he was respected. It does not mean Daniel, Daniel did not deny it. Daniel, Just because no, it does not say finish, it does not mean he did not deny it. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. In Daniel chapter two, yes. verse forty-six. Daniel fell on his face and worshipped. Okay. Daniel fell on uh, Nebuchadnezzar. But Daniel wasn't Jesus though. He wasn't Jesus. And Jesus let never let denied any worship. He no, never Daniel. denied any worship. Daniel never denied it either. But this is Jesus. This is Wait, Jesus who was truly second. God. If okay, this if, is Jesus who was truly on, God. If your point is, is that Jesus did not... J Daniel oblige. was a mere human being who was of flesh. Did Jesus, Jesus was fully God and fully man. So he was much better yeah, example let me, let me than Jesus. Daniel. One question. Point, yeah. One question. He was a much better example than Daniel. Did That's who we look at. Jesus object to worship. Yes or no? Well, with the three magis worship Jesus. If you look in the book of Revelations, the angels are chanting, Holy, 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 Lord God right. Almighty to Jesus. The Can disciples worship Jesus. We have our disciples said, my Lord, so my God, they are worshiping what, Jesus. What is Jesus did not word? deny any of that. What is the Greek word used here for worship? It means to pay respect and homage, but if you, well, there you go. show me so any you Jews, no, 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 show me any Jews, okay, show me any Jews in the Old Testament, okay, where they rejected paying, um, where they rejected paying homage. No, I think we're missing, uh, no, 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 hold on, one second, uh, no, no, we, we no, no, show me any Jews remember, in the Old Testament one, where they rejected so that. I just want to finish yeah, my I point. That. I, just I want to finish yeah. my point. I really want to finish my point. Yeah. Right, so, Jesus did not object to worship. That's fine. But what he's not taking into consideration is that the Greek word used here is proskunio. Proskunio, what does proskunio mean? Proskunio means to pay homage. Pay homage so the yes. disciples paid homage to Jesus. Okay. I have no issues with that. But if you are still consistent, if you are still insisting that Jesus did not receive homage, but it was actual literal worship and he did not object to it, then you must by default agree with me that Daniel is God because Daniel also received worship and Daniel did not object so my question to you my friend is Daniel God because he did not object to yeah, worship so you said you said you wanted me to show you for example where uh, Cleos Cleos means God I can show you in the first Kings I believe chapter let me bring up my notes I also want to bring up another point still I want you to answer my question I am going to but you okay, gave me several points okay, okay go ahead. so you said where does where is God or well, the father referred to as Cleos Cleos. Right? You know John 17 verse 3. If you look at John 17 verse 5, it says, Father, glorify me with no, the glory. We, we affirm, we affirm. It says glorify me with the glory I had with you before the war began. 
This talk. This talk. Okay, wait, wait. I'll save that for a minute. I will respond. So, okay, wait. We're gonna make it. First. So he says, "Father, glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world, before the world began." Okay, so we can clearly see Jesus was not just born here on earth, but he was here with the Father before the beginning yeah, of so time. If, if, now, if you if you look at First John, Jesus giving glory. If you look at First John, the epistles of First John, it says this. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it. Two people against yeah. okay, and we <laughs> proclaim to you the eternal life. One at a time, one okay. at a time. So I just want to show you. Yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, so it says in this one here, first Peter, she's coming onto his feet and first can you of him. This is worship. Okay. Okay. And it's throughout the throughout 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 right that. Matthew 28 May. From where we get the English word Matthew 28, That's 9, yeah? Matthew 28. So, the same, and I want to keep on going. So, I've shown you in the Old Testament where Kulios Kulios means no, God. He said Lord God. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, no, but there's a sept, there's yeah, a no, different. No, 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 hold on, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Let me finish because I allowed you to finish. Go on, go on. Okay, so if you read from the Greek Septuagint, it says Kulios Kulios. Now, the English translation is wrong. The Greek says Kulios Kulios. So, I've shown you. No, I mean, no, no. What you've shown me. The Greek shows wait, you the no, worship, though. Second. What you've shown me where. You've interrupted me. I was trying to make a few points. Okay, you can do a them. Okay, so I've shown you in the Old Testament. If we can go to a translation, my phone's about to die, so I can't do it on my phone. I've got it right here then, translation. In the oh, Greek, no. it says, it means, it means, right? It's called about proskynesen, right? And it's, it literally talks about being worshipped. That's what it talks about Jesus being worshipped. No, so Jesus does not deny that, that oh, worship. Yeah, 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 I just want to, so I'll go through a few points and then you can go, add on, go, go. and then you can speak. So, Kulios Kulios in the Old Testament, throughout the Old Testament, now this is one reference to the Greek lexicon. I've got Greek. Greek lexicon? Sorry, what is it? It's not the lexicon you have to look at, it's just the semantics. So, if you look at the semantics of the Old Testament. It doesn't say pay homage, it is worship. The worship. Okay, okay. Yeah, so. Hold on one second. Yeah, I appreciate, like, brothers. Sorry, can you just move? Stop introducing new points. Yeah, because there's too many new points coming in. Obviously. So, in the Old Testament, throughout the Old Testament, I implore anyone to pick this up. Kulios Kulios. Lord, Lord, Lord God is used to talk about the Father being God. Now, the caveat you keep on saying that I'm emphasizing Lord, Lord in that verse yeah. and I'm not actually seeing the caveat, but I am. It says, why do you call me Lord, Lord and do not do what I say? And then he goes on to say, if you do what I say, you will be a wise man with strong foundation. So he's actually emphasizing the previous point and emphasizing the previous verse with context. Yeah. I am Lord, Lord, I am God, right? Do as I say and you will be a wise man. Okay. Now why, instead of that, is he just denying it? Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna respond to you. Right? He needs to respond to this one as well. Uh, hold on, I, re I wanna respond to you. What I am saying to you, what you showed me, where it says, Lord God, right? That's what you showed me. And that's referring to the Father. Yeah, the Father is Lord God. But that's the what, English. No, no, hold on, if one, you go back one to, second. You just miss your representative. No, do you point. know why, no, do you know why that I find that more accurate? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I find that more accurate than what you're trying to profess. Right? Because the Father is identified as the only true God according to Jesus. Yes or no? I want to bring that point. Yeah, can I explain that point? Hold on one second. One second. Is the point, yeah. Father, according to John 17 verse 3, ident Don't worry, we'll get to verse okay. 5. I want right? to spend that now. We will get Don't to verse five. We agree. No, we agree. Do you oh, agree was, between yeah. you two, can I while that? arguing, yeah. that the Father <laughs> yes. yeah, is identified as the only true okay, God? Okay, so in yes John, no? okay, yes, because we are we believe in a the monarchy. Then that's it. Where the Son, okay, listen Finish. to this. No, no, oh, listen no. to this. Where we believe the Father is the is greater than Jesus in the role of ranking. So Jesus is not denying the fact that he is not God, but he's just affirming, affirming the deity of the Father. Oh no! Okay? Read listen, it listen. yourself! He's just he affirming, said, this is life he's just affirming the deity of the Father. Okay? And now if you, look, okay, if you look at John 17 verse 5, it says, Father, glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world began. Now we can clearly see that Jesus was here he, before the world began. So he was in heaven still, with the Father before the I world have a, began. I have a question for you. No, I want to I explain is, this. Is, let me know, is, you know, is God giving glory? Let me explain this. Let me explain this. So, so we can clearly see that Jesus was with the Father before the world began. So he was not just a mere man, but he must have, he must have been surely divine. Now if you look at 1 John 1-2, it says this, The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life. It says the eternal life, meaning Jesus Christ must have been eternal. So if Jesus Christ was eternal, it must clearly show you, my, fr my, my, uh, my friend, that Jesus was God. Now when Jesus says about the Father be the only true God, it's just simply 
Jesus affirming the nature of the godness of that divinity the Father has. And because the Father has a divine nature, because the Son is begotten eternally from the Father, he gets that um, nature from the He gets that nature. He gets that nature from the Father. Okay. Sister He gets that he gets that nature from the Father. And because the Father because the Father has a godly divine nature, the Son derives that nature from the Father. Which is why we see in John 3 16, Christ is called the Moniginis, the unique Son of God, because He right. shares that divine essence right. with the let, Father. Let me respond to some of the words, because there's a lot that's been thrown out. As you said, I was thrown out and you're thrown out a lot, right? Now, wait, 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 you didn't. Wait, you didn't. Ash, let me finish, man. Let Look, the Greek, you have to go to the Greek where it says He was worshipped in. Okay. It clearly says Jesus was worshipped okay. in Greek. Okay, so now. I go back to the point I raised, right? I said to you that Jesus, did he receive worship? You said, yes, he did. There was no objections. Mm -hmm. Daniel received worship. There was no objections. Is, G is Daniel God? You said, but, no, no, just because oh, Daniel, wait, wait, just wait, Daniel wait, did not reject, just because it says Ash, in there, finish, does not bro. mean Daniel did not reject it. Bearing in mind Jesus Christ, many, why many I, people my brother, why paid homage to Jesus, worshipped him, why you don't let me he did not reject it. Why, why is it? So many people did it, he did not reject a single Ash, once. Just because finish. Daniel got worshipped once, Ash, did not finish. mean he did not allow reject me it. Allow me to finish, Ash. Come on, you've got to oh. be patient. Ish, ish. Ish, ish. Yes. Right. You've got to be patient. Okay. Right, so, did Daniel receive worship? Yes, he did. Did he object to worship? No, he didn't. Does that make Daniel God? No. But it's not the... Uh, uh, wait, hold on one second. Yeah. He received the same worship that Jesus received and he did not object. And the Greek word used here is proskunio. Now... Worship. Now, proskunio means worship. It means to pay homage. It means worship. It means to pay It means homage. worship as well. Get out, get out the lexicon. Get out the Greek lexicon. I showed you it means worship. Proskunio. Get yeah, out the so Greek I'm just curious, I just want to clarify oh, something. Hold on one second, one yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. Right. Now I said, in John 17 verse 3, right? Yes. In John 17 verse 3, Jesus identifies the Father as the only true God. Because he's out of faith. So that completely contradicts everything we've come forward with. Yes. Now you quoted verse But that five. one true so God, that nature second. is one shared second. within the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is shared. Let me explain. Let me finish. What I'm saying, right? Now, in verse 5, it says, Give me the glory that I had with you before the world was. Yes. Now, does that mean because Jeremiah, for example, existed in the knowledge of God? In Jeremiah chapter 1, Let me explain. in Jeremiah well. chapter 1, he said, I knew you in your mother's womb, right. and I made you a prophet to the children of Israel. So God knew Jeremiah in the pre-existent world. God the Father had knowledge of his pre-creation. So when he says, give me the glory that I had with you before the world was, even for argument's sake, let's say for argument's sake that Jesus did exist in the beginning. For argument's sake, the knowledge of God existed in the beginning with God as well. And Does Jesus that, is the wisdom no, wait, of God. Wait, wait, can I finish? Let me express can I finish? He is the knowledge of God. I he is the wisdom, finish. eternal wisdom I of God. To finish. I want to finish. I am going to go to Proverbs chapter 8. Okay, no, we, I'm going to read this. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I've got to read can this. I to because you? I'm going to lose the point. I'm going to lose yeah, track of what I'm saying. And then can I go to 17.3? Because I think we can. Yeah, the brother's going to 17.5, and I don't think that's going to do it. Okay, we will. I didn't just go to 17.5. I went to first place of John as well. It didn't work because we're this adding on a verse. I want to explain why. Let's go. To the only one true God. Right, let's go to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 23. You'll be surprised what it says, right? I, I think I might. I know this one. Right, it says, where is it? 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 Now, look at this. If you think that Jesus is God because he existed before the world was in uh, John 17, verse 5, let's read Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22. The Lord created me at the beginning of his works. Mm -hmm. 
much speed. Wow, this sounds like this is a person now being pursued. What does that mean in Hebrew? No, hold on, let me finish. Just get, if you you like finish. to go to the languages, no, 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 what does no, no, that mean no, no. in Hebrew? Let me finish. It means possess. No, let me finish. That's what the word means in Hebrew. Let me finish. I so finished. the Father possessed the wisdom finished, of Jesus but I haven't even finished. since the time of creation. Ish, I haven't even finished. And you're jumping down my throat already. <laughs> Give me a chance. Right. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work. The first of the acts of old. Ages ago, I was set up. Now this is now someone who's been personified as a person. He said, I was set up at first before the beginning of the earth. Think about this now, right? When there were no depths, I was brought forth. Can I repeat this after? When there were I'll no springs so abounding with water, this, yeah. before the mountains had yeah. been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. Before yep. he had made the earth with its fields, or the first of its dust of the world, when he established the heavens, I was there. So does that mean that person is now God? Because now that person, no, okay, that so, but okay. hold on, let me finish, and then I want you to respond. Yeah, I will. Right? This person has now been personified as a person by saying, I existed, I was there in the beginning of the heavens and the earth. So if you're saying that Jesus is God, because in John 17 verse 5 it says, and give me the glory that I had with you before the world was, then you must then concede that Proverbs chapter 8 verse 23 is also speaking about a God as well. Now, the last part I want to point out, it also says in John 17 verse 5, it says, give me the glory that I had with you before the world was. Mm. Hold on a minute. How can God be given glory? I thought glory belongs to God in itself. How can God be given glory? In fact, in John 17, Because he rolled his glory, he humbled himself. In John 17, verse 21. I'm because I have good reviews. Right? This is my last point, by the yeah, way. Yeah, thank you. In John 17, verse 21, and then I would like you to respond. Uh, I will, and I have most of them, but if there's any points I miss, please tell me. Right, it says here, in 21, it says... Da -da -da -da. that they may all be one, even as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, so that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, the glory which thou hast given me. Yeah. See, this is the understanding in, on John 17, verse 5. The glory that has been given to me, I have given it to them. Yeah. So the same glory that you're speaking about, the disciples also has the same glory. So has. So is the disciples God's now? You, okay. Please answer my first okay. question. So, glory. Do you know what an energy essence distinction is? Okay, so the essence possesses the energies. His energies being his actions. So in terms of his, uh, what was the word? In terms of his glory, that's an energy, right? And we say that the essence does not enter into creation in terms of the human form of Jesus. He is given glory. Jesus' human form is an energetic manifestation and the energies of glory is handed to Jesus. The energy possesses the essence. Do you understand? The energy possesses the essence. So... The essence possesses the energy, sorry. And let me continue. Because continue. I, I, you gave me several points, I'm going to refute them. 17.3, the Father is the only true God, right? That's now, what he says, right? Yeah. He's our say. He has our say a T. He possess, uh, he uh, derives the essence of himself, right? He's the originator. He is the only true God. Who? The Father. I agree with he you. He derives the essence. But then that debunks your whole... Yeah, hold on, hold on. <laughs> he derives the essence we are fine with saying that... We'll, you just refuted yourself. No, hold on, hold on. You re I stayed quiet. Now allow no, me to on, speak. No, go ahead, yes, go ahead, okay, go he on. derives the essence. He's Artefeos, he's our say, right? So we affirm a monarchy in the Trinity. We're monarch Trinitarians, correct? Do you, do you know what that is? You're a monarch Trinitarian. Yeah, we're monarch Trinitarians. So we affirm to... that the Father is the one In the role, role, in ranking. Exactly, in, ranking. in authority. At, at so you don't believe that they're all equal in the God? No, in the sense of authority and in the sense that the Father derives the essence. But they are God's one in nature. Are they the equal in the Godhead? They, no, they're equal in power. Don't interrupt me. So in terms of him being the originator, he's our say. He is the one true God because he derives the essence. We have no issue in saying that. I love 17.3. It's a yeah. fantastic verse. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And in terms of Proverbs, now, oh, I'd be interested I've got a, I've got a for you to hear this. You do realize our early church to speak to people like uh, David, like Mary, as being lowercase God. They have the noose. Do you know what the noose is? 
The noose is for taking part of the divine energies. To say, for example, you're a holy person, you're a prophet, you can have the divine energies in creation. So we would say that these people are lowercase g. Mm. We're fine in saying that they're God. Lowercase There's God. no capitals. No, so There's no capitals we in say the language. Capital. So again, you're just making no, a no, fallacy right there. Uh, we're not making a fallacy. When we say lowercase <laughs> are, g, no, no, when we say lowercase v, we right. say uh, theosis, right? Taking part in the divine energies, we become a divine person. Now, does this make sense to you? Why in John who, who becomes a divine person? Lowercase g, the taking part in the divine energies. I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure if you're unfamiliar with Eastern Orthodox theology, but that's what we affirm. That's why we say the uh, uh, Mother of God is full of grace. She has the divine energies. So yes, the, the person of Jesus can receive the energies of glory. The Father is the one true God. He has our saity. He is the originator. So we have no issue with that. We believe in a monarchy and the Trinity. And we can say that these people are lowercase g. They're lowercase god. So how can you affirm? Wait, I want to. Hold on, sorry, I just want to respond to some of you. Sorry. But you know, you said about pro words. You made, you made something. You made a mistake. No, you, made, you gave us several points. I want. You, I said. I want. Yeah, I want. Yeah, I want yeah, can I just bring out some? You know, to, okay, you on, said about um, in the book of Proverbs eight twenty two, right? About how Yahweh created me at the beginning, the wisdom. Yeah. Well, in the in, in the in the Hebrew, it talk, the word uses um, tanani. Tanani, right? That's what that's the word used in Hebrew. Uh, in, in Hebrew, and it shows here. It says Yahweh possessed me at the beginning. It doesn't say created. It say is it talk about possession? And we know in the New Testament from the from the Book of Corinthians, it says this. It says, it says Paul calls Christ the wisdom of God. So Jesus is the wisdom of God, and this wisdom is eternal. Like Allah's speech is eternal. Allah's attributes, His wisdom is eternal. So the same way with the Father, the same way with Yahweh, wherever comes forth from him has to be eternal as well because Yahweh is an eternal person so that wisdom that speech of Yahweh the the power of Yahweh has to be eternal as well so when Jesus is referred to the wisdom of God it shows that he is the eternal wisdom of show God from the beginning of creation show me one Christian scholar that says, that says I want to, I want to see the evidence that's appeal to fall, uh, authority one, fallacy hold on one second show me one Christian scholar that equivocates um, Proverbs eight twenty three to Jesus. I That's an appeal to uh, authority fallacy, no, no, it's not. where you where the Bible is clearly no, our authority. No, the Bible on. is clearly our authority. No, but you're not showing me any evidence. Uh, you just came with a that, claim. Okay. Now hold on one second. You've come with a claim, but you haven't substantiated that. You claim. said it's about Jesus. You, you legit said that um, in the book of Proverbs, it was Jesus being the wisdom of God. I never said that. No, you I said it was Jesus, the wisdom no, being repeat, created, no, which not, is about Jesus. I did not say that. Uh, what I said is that. The wisdom of God has been personified. It's speaking about an individual. I never said an who, individual who. Wait, Which wait, individual? Hold on one second. Let it's me about Christ, right? Me, does it say that? Well, who is in the wisdom Proverbs. of God? It's Christ. In Proverbs, does it say it's speaking about Christ? Well, if you clearly look at the context, no, 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 no. if you read the book of Proverbs, in Proverbs does it it's, say about it's, it's about Jesus Christ. It's about Jesus Christ. Please answer my question. In the book of Proverbs, chapter eight, verse twenty-three, does it say that he's speaking about Jesus in that verse? Yes or no? Well, okay. Who else? If you look at the yes or no, if, yes. yes. Because if you look at the whole Show book me. of Proverbs, such as the Proverbs thirty, it talks about the sun coming down. Ish. The whole proverb is a symbolic message about Jesus that Christ. This is speaking about Jesus. So in, in Proverbs, verse. in Proverbs eight, it is about the wisdom which the which the Father possessed, which is Jesus Christ, and that Ish. wisdom is eternal. Who is the wisdom You're of God? It's Jesus. I showed you the wisdom of God is Jesus Christ. Because we believe right. in the triune God, they somehow right. work together. The wisdom of the Father is Jesus Christ, you, you, who is the you, eternal you're, you're wisdom you're of the Father. You of worms for yourself and I'll tell you why. I've asked you, and I want to get back to what you're saying, because I'm starting to lose track because you know, you're diverting me from something completely different. Right? Yeah, I'd prefer that you answer right? I, I, I'll try. But I want to I wanna quickly go run with this one. Right? Let's run with this one. Right? I asked you, show me in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 23, where this is specifically speaking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. You cannot show me anywhere where it says that. I challenge you, it doesn't say that anywhere. I asked you, okay, <coughs> show me your proof. That's why I'm now I'm appealing to authority. The reason why I'm appealing to authority. I showed you. I showed you. Oh, if you auntie, what do you want? If you look at the whole auntie, Proverbs, auntie. if you look at the Old Testament, all these books had a main message, had a main symbolic message, and that message was about Jesus Christ. So when the wisdom is referred to in the Old Testament, the book of Proverbs, that is Jesus Christ. So, Brother Hamza, I was saying to you if, you, if you look at the Old Testament, 
if you read every single book from Genesis to the end of the Old Testament, there's a main symbolism we see about Jesus Christ. Okay, such as such as being what you're doing, you're rambling. But such as the lamb that was slain. Answering my question. If you look I at you, if you I look at you, the Old Testament, ish, ish, the main ish, symbolism we see ish, is about ish, Jesus ish, Christ. Be sincere. It's about I'm Jesus asked, Christ. Ish, be sincere, my brother. Okay. I'm saying to you, show me in the book of Proverbs. Chapter 8, that this is specifically talking about Jesus. You cannot show it's a me description. Where, hold it's on a description. One hold on one second. It's a this description. Is speaking about the wisdom of God. Who is the, the wisdom, wisdom of God? Of God. It's Jesus. Hold on, man. Jesus is the wisdom of God. Ish, what is wrong with you? But you're, look, look. I'm showing you by the Bible. You don't like having a dialogue, do you? you, just, you just Christ is the wisdom so, of God. Right. So again, He I'm, is the wisdom I'm, of God. Again, I want you to connect this verse through. On all tradition, or appeal to me, authority fallacy. Point, me, point, point, point to me. Appeal to authority no, fallacy. No, but you're committing a fallacy. Can, you we, can we just go to the no, main point? I, I will. Yeah. I will. And I'm trying to. But I, I'm getting stuck on this point because he's not answering my question. So unfortunately, I can't move until he responds. Now, what I am asking to, asking you, you. Mm. I'm not appealing to authority. You are appealing to your logic. But the Bible. What you're saying. Bible's no, my authority. Hold on one second. The logic that the you are appealing. The Bible is Hold on one second. Auntie, pardon here. Auntie, I'm here. I'm here. Auntie, who's the wisdom of God? No way. Right. So, what I'm saying to you, right? What I'm saying to you is that what you're appealing to is logic, but you're not appealing to either from a biblical sense. Neither are you appealing it to scholarly authority. So why? Now, no, no, hold on. Let me finish. Let me, finish. Uh, let me address the point. Now, what he's done is okay. that he has just said, that, "Oh, okay," because Jesus is called the wisdom of God. Jesus called wisdom, so he's, all he's done is put one and one together for, okay, I'm going to put my two brain cells together and I'm going to say, well, that equals that. Because wisdom, if Jesus called wisdom and Proverbs chapter 8, 23 is talking about wisdom, then he's connected to two. So I am saying that's a fallacy in itself because you're not, you're not showing me even from the text that this is referring to Jesus, neither are you appealing to authority that it's referring to Jesus. So you're making the fallacy. No. That's number one. Number two, you. I'm going to go to you. Now, you mentioned about John 17 verse 3, yeah. right? John 17 verse 3 identifies the Father as the only true God. Now, were. Christians now affirm that, hold on, no, the Holy Spirit is the only true God. No, we say, no, hold on one second. Our position. No, no, That's I not know, what we say. No, no, hold on. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father, so he has to be the, the true God. Is the only true God. We say he's God. <laughs> No, is he the only true God? Are you saying he's God? Yes, but he okay. should. Can no, I? No, no, he on. is. What, 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 he is. Can I explain to you? And I want to explain to you. He is the only true I, I God as well address, because he proceeds eternally from the Father. And because the Father is the only true God, whatever proceeds from him has to be the only true God as well. And that only true God is that one divine essence. There's not three separate gods. There's not three separate gods. There's not three separate gods. Is the Father the only true God? Listen, okay. is the, hold on one second. I'm, no, wait, wait, hold on. I'm going to prove that you contradict each other. So we believe Do you believe that the Holy Spirit is the only true God? Yes, because... Is the Holy Spirit the only true God? Yes. You're lying because you just said just now, you just said just now that the Holy, the, the, the Holy Spirit... I was trying Spirit, to clarify. The Holy oh, Spirit is the only word. true God oh, because you, He eternally proceeds from the Father. Like how whatever proceeds from the Father has to be eternally within Him as well. Wait, hold on and because second. the Father is the eternally true God, whatever Wait, proceeds from Him you makes them the only earlier. true God as well. You just said earlier, right? Now hold on one second. I asked you, is the Father the only true God? You said yes. Yes. I asked you, is the Holy Spirit the only true God? You and said He's a God. He's the true, only I, I true God as well. The yes. true God. And then I was going to clarify, like He said. They so, share the. Okay, so let, let me hear your remix. We believe. We on. believe in the eternal. Let me hear the remix version. So, I can, and let me, so we believe in the eternal procession, where the Holy Spirit eternally proceeds from the Father. Okay. So wherever eternally comes from from the Father, it, it means that they share that same nature. Right. And because the Father is the only true God, is that it, it, true makes, it makes Jesus the only true God about, and the Holy Spirit the only true God Fine. because they share that one same nature. No there is one nature within the Trinity. No There's one problem. essence within the Trinity. No we do not believe in three separate gods. Otherwise, do actually, we do not believe in three separate gods. We, we believe in one why. essence, one, one divine nature. And the Father, I'll the Son, and Holy Spirit, they share that one essence yeah, and one that. divine nature.
Go to you believe in separate gods. I, my claim no. is that he does. And I'll prove to you that he, you do, right? But before we get there, right? No, no. Say, you've made a statement that we're polytheists, substantially. Okay, I will. But I, I want to finish the point and I'll yeah, so, uh, I, I will. Up, no, hold yeah, on, hold one on. second. I, I will. I just want to review the points I made. So I said energy essence distinction, the glory is his energies. I said the Father is the one, only true, the only one true God. Yeah. And what else did I say? Yeah, I said that you can be called lowercase to God. Okay, so I asked you, I asked you earlier, is the Holy Spirit the only true God? And I was, you yes. said, you yes. said, no, no, you said yes. You, the response you gave was different to his. He said I yes said, as well. No. You said, I said no, I was going to clarify. Right. You said no, right? Because I was going to clarify, I don't say yes or no. I try to be precise with my words. Did I not do that previously when you were okay. giving us a list of right. so, questions? So do you believe the Holy Spirit is the only true God? Yes. They share okay. that one now, divine nature, the true godness. Let's yes. examine this, right? Right. So Jesus said, this is life eternal. That they may know you. Who is who's you referring to? Here? He's just affirming the deity the of the Father. Yeah, the personal being He's, of the Father. And the Holy Spirit proceeds the, from the Father. The it's an eternal procession. The personal being who? The Father. Yes. So is this referring to the Father or not? Yes. Right. So and it says and so there's a conjunction in a sentence that Jesus Christ, who ha whom thou hast sent, right? So Jesus identifies that the Father is the only true. Being, yeah, we the have only a, true it's called God. Economia. Right, hold one second. The Father is the only true God according right. to Jesus' statement. Now, what I want you to show me is as follows. Show me in the New Testament where it says that this is life eternal, that they may know that the Father is the only true God, the Son is the only true God, and the Holy Spirit is the only true God. Yeah, so this would Show me that. Yeah, yeah, so Show me a verse where it says to, that. Yeah, so it would go back to my original point that you were first from surface clear as clear. I can answer that's that. I can answer that, right? No, because you still haven't. No, because we keep on diverting to different points. Because obviously, your way of debating is bringing up several points, and then I have to slowly address them. So ultimately, we go further and further away from the point. Now, your original question is, where is Jesus called God? I gave you it. You emphasised the caveat, which I showed to you does not affect my point. Then we went on to seventeen three. Hold on. Then we went on to seventeen three. I spoke about that. I spoke about the energy essence distinction, and you brought up the authority of the Father sent than the son. Now we affirm this is called economia. The father has the mo has the authority to send down the son. Yeah, I, I've got the you're answer. Not, you're not, hold on one second. I've got the answer you're to your question. To my point. I am. I've got no, the answer no, to your question. I will tell you why. I will tell you why. I will tell you why I believe you have it. Right? But I got the answer to your question, by the way. No, can, okay, I, I, can I respond? Can I respond quickly? No, no, no. Hold on one second. And I yes, and I am accused of being a polytheist, and I'll tell you why. Right? right? In John one one, right? It says, right? In allocating hologos, right? In the beginning was the word. Can I, can I just finish? The we father does. We do one by one. By I, am, I, no, am. Yeah. So I am. I am. So can we just stick you to. You asked me. We stick to polytheism. To prove to you. Yeah, yeah. So can we stick to polytheism? I. One point, a uh, few verses. Then I'll bring it. I'll counter that. Then you bring up another point. Because currently you're doing this tactic whereby you barrage us with mm. different points in different verses. No, no, no. We are. I wonder if. You're, wait, uh, Hamza, Hamza. Wait, you wait, wait, hold you're on, running hold away. On. Look. I'm I want it. You know. I'm here. You talked about Jesus. You talked about Jesus being the only true God, which it does mention. It says this in, in 1 John 5 20 and we are in him who is true by being in his son Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. So it talks about Jesus being the true God and eternal life, which we, we also see in chapter 1 of 1 John. Is that a red letter? Which we also see in 1 John 1st epistle, uh, epistle, where Jesus, Jesus Christ was eternal life letter? with the Father. If Jesus is eternal, You're it clearly God. shows he was wait, God. Okay. Is that Jesus' words? Yeah, so okay, you're now, committing an eternal critique. No, wait, hold another on, thing. Hold on. Wait, 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 another wait, 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 thing. You're about to no, a massive fallacy. Another thing. Listen, fallacy. Listen. Okay, so you're committing an eternal critique, right? So you have to concede that these are our authorities. Where did it say Jesus? And these are what our authorities no. say. Where did you, Jesus you, himself you. say in the Quran he's the Messiah? Where did Muhammad himself say in the Quran he's not a sinner? Where did it say that? One second, one second. You didn't finish. I asked you. I don't, hold on. You the did. Holy Spirit. If, allow me to finish, man. Okay. What's wrong with you? Right. But you didn't let me finish about the Holy Spirit. I, I, I'm trying. You haven't even hard let, finished. Let me finish half the things I. The Holy finished. Spirit in Hebrews 9:14 is if, known as the Eternal if, Spirit. If. And if, if the Holy Spirit is eternal, he proceeds let, from the ish, Father and he is another person within the Godhead, he has to be God as well. Okay. And because that Godhead shares that same nature, if the Father is the only true God, it makes the Son the only true God. Likewise, the Holy Spirit the only true God because they are one in essence and they share that one same nature. Okay. There you go. Right. So you haven't, you, 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 listen, right? If you believe, right, 
that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are the only true God, then you have to concede that the disciples are also part of the only true God. They were never eternal. Because, hold something. on one second, yeah, that the, the disciples Bible. are also part of the Godhead. Yeah. Because in John 17 verse 21, yes. Jesus says so, that the same oneness that we share, yes. is this not addressed I by pray, no, hold on, why? But that oneness, why are you guys the oneness he's on about, no, the, bro, 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 the, bro, the bro, disciples bro, bro, only bro, get that bro, oneness bro, 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 from the Godhead. Ish, okay, they did, they did not eternally not have that oneness, but they did not eternally Ish, have that not oneness. Afraid. They only Ish, get that oneness Ish. from Jesus Christ giving it to them. Ish. Okay, that's what that oneness what, was about. It's about unity. That like, oneness is about unity. And they only Why get that given finish? by Jesus Let Christ. Jesus Let obtained that oneness from the times of right. eternity. So I will say it again. By right? the way, I, don't know, I did reject uh, Hold on one originally. second. I can't. I'm not trying you. I don't, I'm not two of me. Yeah. I can only answer one Obviously, of you, Obviously, right? but you made right. a point that so I let originally me, let me address. I originally addressed your point. I said that these people could re be referred to as lowercase god because they take part in the divine essence. They have a noose. Right, let me finish, right? Let me finish. Let me finish. Now, please let me complete what I have to say yes. and then critique my position. Mm. Don't let me just start off and then you went, and you cut me off. Well, no, but I know you're going to say, I know right. you're going to say. Right, so. You're talking about the oneness of glory. You, what I am saying to you, right? I am going to go, I, I have accused you of being a polytheist. I believe that you are a mushrik, right? You are, because you believe in separate gods. You actually do. As, well, as much the as Lord, you, our as God, much, is one. The Father is God. Claim, the Son is God. As as the Holy Spirit is God, because they said that one much, nature. Hold on, Ish, man. What's wrong with you? How do you believe in man? Okay, go. What's wrong with you, brother? Go on, go on. Right. As much as you try to claim that you are a monotheist, you are clearly far from being a monotheist. Listen, I'll give us a right. Right. Do you believe in one God? No, you don't. You yes. believe in the multiplicity of God. We believe in three substances. Let me, let me prove to you. Three hypostasis. Let, 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 let me prove to you. Let me prove to you that you are a polytheist and not a monotheist, right? You believe that the Son eternally brought, came forth from the Father. Do you believe this? Yes. Right. You also believe that the Father. Do you believe that the Father is separate from the? So do you believe that the Son is separate from the Father? No. In terms of persona, but no. they are one in being. Be, whether it be, yeah, this, yeah. do you believe that they are integral? They are one in essence and in being. The one in they essence. essence. Yes, yes. Right. So, when the, when Jesus was on the cross, was he speaking to himself? The Father. He speaking to the Father. Because they had the. Okay. So hold on. So he was speaking to someone else. Yes. So if he's speaking to someone else, he's speaking to another being. So he's speaking to someone he's, who is separate from speak, himself. Well, hold on. Are you speaking to persona, a person? Persona. Persona. Can I give you why we consider ourselves monotheists? <laughs> yeah, I can give you why. Please. So go ahead. have I you read, for example, David Limps and Bo Banson's principle of why we count by division? Sorry, so, I can't hear you. Uh, Bo Banson's principle and David Limps why we count by division. Have you read it? No. I yeah. So ultimately, we, re we count the Trinity by division. Right? We do not count by constituents or identity. Now these people are distinctive persons. Now are distinctions division or separation? Okay, give me some examples of this distinction. Yeah, so distinction in terms of personhood, that's a distinction. Relational position if you're Catholic. So does Jesus have personhood? Yeah. Does the Father have personhood? Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. So, so, if, so, is, so are there two separate personhoods or one personhood? Now is, is distinction division? Is distinction no no you answer my question i'm asking you if the father has personhood mm -hmm. and the son has personhood mm -hmm. are there two separate personhood or one personhood two distinct personhoods which ultimately appeal to the will of the trinity and they derive their personhood so two, oh, no, so hold on hold on hold on interrupting two personhoods which derive their existence from one divine essence now i'll ask you this does this distinction Entail separation and is this separation? Yes, it does because you use the term two distinct personhoods. Distinct. If you, no, what, distinct second, your spirit, you, your soul no, are distinct, second, but they're also you. If you said that there was one personhood, then there cannot be any distinction. But if you're saying that there are two personhoods, that means there is a separation, right? Like, for example, if I said, uh, what's your name again? Thomas. Thomas. If I said Hamza and Thomas went down to Sainsbury's to buy bread, ah. am I talking about one person? Or two distinct yeah, persons. Yeah, so you're kind of pre so this analogy is analogous. So I'll give you a better uh, analogy. If can you, you can you re can you yeah, at least I'm going to respond. Now, respond. Okay. I'm going to give you an analogy which is more befitting of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. Then I'll show you how yours is not analogous. Is okay, that fun? Okay. Ahead. So uh, you have ten kurats, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Your ten kurats are all these kurats fully the Quran. 
What are you talking about? Just, just go run it through me. Are all these ten kirats fully the Quran? I think this is a really bad example. No, no, given. ladies and gentlemen. No, this just, is a bad example. No, wait, wait, hold on. This hold is on, a bad hold example. On. I let you gave the example. Let me use mine. Okay. But so, you haven't responded. Hey, 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 hello. I, yeah, you, you haven't responded to did, my did, question. Did you not agree? That are the Hafs, Walsh, and Duri? No, are, they, no, no. are they part of one Quran? One Quran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they one Quran? Different modes of recitation. But they are one Quran, yeah. though. Yeah. yeah. They're so, different modes still of recitation. That's the one Quran, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so one they're all fully the Quran. Are they all fully the Quran? Hold on. If I said Malik Yomidin, the owner of the Day of Judgment, and Malik Yomidin, but it's still one Quran, though, isn't it? You brought Kira, and now you're running away from the Quran. These Quran. No, because you haven't answered my question. These Quran, are they all fully the Quran? Listen. They saw the card, oh, right? Answer yes. My question. Yes. Yes. Okay. So yes. we have ten distinct books, which are all fully the Quran, which have distinctions. You count by division. That's why you have one Quran and several kirats. No, no, you're wrong. Listen, that's right. This is a bad yeah. example you're giving. Why? Right. Now, saying Malik Yomidin, I'm giving an example, right? If I said Malik Yomidin, he's not going by recitation, man. And well, I have to because you're giving Quran. But it's What's still it? one Quran, though, isn't you know it? What I find funny. Half is Quran, Walsh is Quran, Dori is still a Quran at the end of the day. You're coming out of the example There's of three recitations, but there's still to Quran, one Quran. You don't want to respond to it. There's three hypers. I gave an example about. There's three hypostases oh, within the Trinity, but they're still fully God because they share the same nature. <laughs> listen, listen, this is getting more funny than a minute, right? We're not yeah, talking about. This, this is actually getting more hilarious than ever. Wait, and I'll tell you what. Do you believe the half is it? Wait, hold on, wait, 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 hold on. Hold on. Right? Are you denying the fact that Hold on. these are, aren't they Quran? To you, I am saying to you, uh, is this, right? I asked, I gave you an example. You're talking about distinction, you're talking about personhood, mm. right? And you're talking about the Trinity, yes. right? You gave a, a whack example about Kira'a. Yes, right? so tell me how it's not I said, analogous. Right, so what I am asking you, right? I am saying to you, right? I said, does Jesus Christ have personhood? This does not right? go back to because you. Would, it, hold on, hold on. You agreed. Is the half the Why are you not letting yeah, me finish? Because you agreed that you would entertain this analogy, and you haven't. These ten kirats, they're fully the Quran. They have listen, distinct how words. How does that match up to the example? Because they have. How does that yeah, match up to the yeah, example yeah, I gave you? Show have, me. Yeah, because I showed. Okay, I said that I'd give you this analogy, yeah. and I'll show how yours is not analogous with the Trinity. So why is it not analogous yeah, to the yeah, Trinity? Beautiful. Good. You and me do not. Your existence from the same essence, do you? Sorry, go on, go on, go on. Do you derive your existence, me and you, from the same essence? Sorry, do I? Do you derive your existence from the same essence that I do? From the one being, yeah. No, from the one essence. Do you have the same essence as me? We have different essence. Congratulations. Do the persons of the Trinity have a different essence? In my theology, obviously you probably disagree with me. Well, but then, that, but that proves that you're a polytheist. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. How many, how many, how many, no, wait, hold on one second. How many if natures do you have? No, wait, wait, how many natures on, do you have? You have a human nature, a nature of the soul, wait, the nature wait, of the spirit. Wait, 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 Likewise with the Trinity, there are three different... About, hold on one second. Okay. Does Jesus have his own essence? Or is it integral They share to the, the father? same nature, the it's same integral, essence. And they have an interdependent relationship in terms of dependency. The Father derives the essence, a necessary property of the essence of the free person. The, the Father the derives his essence from where? No, no, the from Father's Otifios. So yeah. the, the, fa Otifios. the Father's Otifios, where right, so he eternally has that nature. The Son eternally right. is regenerated so, from the Father, so the father and the Holy Spirit yeah. eternally so proceeds the from the Father. Derives, so. Hold on one second. So do you believe that the essence of the Father is eternally with him? Yes. yes. Right. Can you say the same thing about Jesus? Is yes. his essence yes. Yes. eternally with him? There's four of his essence and yes. Because he right. gets it eternally from the Father. Right. It's an eternal so regeneration. Is knowledge eternally existing with the Father? Knowledge. Yes. yes. Right. Does the Father have eternal knowledge from the beginning of time, from the beginning of time to the end of time? Yes. Does mm. Jesus have eternal knowledge from the beginning of time to the end of time. Yes. Okay. Yes. So tell time me, the hour. Time the tell hour. Me, tell me why Jesus did not know the day. Of because day. if no, hold on, one, one second, hold on, yeah. one second. Hold on, one second. Yeah. If Jesus' knowledge is eternal, right? Why did he say that the only one who knows that knowledge is the Father? If Jesus has eternal knowledge. So why didn't Jesus know the hour? Because if you look at the Greek word, it's, um, it's declared as oiden. Oiden means um, to declare something. Like how Apostle Paul says in the first Corinthians, he knows nothing but the Lord Jesus Christ crucified. Now, obviously, Apostle Paul knows a lot of things. He's a very educated man. But he just, it's not for him to declare anything else but the Lord Jesus Christ crucified. So when Jesus Christ says that nobody knows the hour, bearing in mind that this man, know, uh, this Jesus, read the hearts and minds of man, right? Gave the end days prophecies to Apostle Daniel, to Apostle John, okay? 
So when Jesus says nobody knows the hour, it's about a declaration. Because in the Jewish tradition, it is for the Father to declare when the bridegroom will come. And because Jesus is the bridegroom, it will be the Father to declare the hour about Jesus' coming. I also so it's not the fact that Jesus did not know. It's not that it was not the, it's not the fact that Jesus was not ignorant, but it's a matter of declaration. Which is which we see in the book of Acts, um, in, the, in the book of Acts, right. chapter so, 1 is for the Father to declare the hour, not the Son. Right. So go back. So, so do you concede that that verse in the Bible is wrong? No, it's no. not wrong. It's just you have to look at the Greek. See, you see, Greek. when he says, hold on one second. When it says that no one knows the hour, mm -hmm. yeah, so I am not, sorry, I am not running with that interpretation. Right? Saint so Augustine? I am not running, no, I am not, okay. right, hold on one second, let me finish. Yeah. I am not running with that interpretation, right? And the reason why I'm not running with that interpretation is because you have to now appeal, see you're committing a fallacy, what you accuse right. me you of. You don't like it, man, you don't like hold Hamza. On one second, you're appealing to a fallacy, which is a fallacy uh, to authority, right? Which you accuse me of. You see that I'm appealing to fallacy, because I'm appealing to authority. Yeah, so but hold on, but the verse doesn't say that. And I quoted John 17 the Greek. verse Oiden, oh, the Greek. One second. The Greek. Why the original Greek is talks about Oiden. Show, 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 show me. And it's and about declaration. Verse, show me right now that this mm -hmm. is talking about what you just said there. And okay. you, the word use is Oiden, yes. which okay, means okay. that it's a declaration and not the fact that Jesus didn't know. Mm. Show me. Okay, you got, you got, yeah, so I don't know, my phone's dead. So can we go back, so while he's looking that up, can we go back to my analogy? Because you seem to not like it, but you didn't give like a syllogism about why that shouldn't be the no, case. No, I, it's it's, I think it's a very silly answer, it's a silly okay, question. Okay, so we have, I should, it's wait, a wait, silly wait, I'll go through why it makes sense. These kirats all derive, uh, let's just say their existence from the existence of the Quran, right? If there was no Quran, there would be no kirats, you would agree? If there's no Quran, there no, would be no, yeah. No, I'll run so, it, run yeah, so, the existence of these kirats derived from the Quran. All these distinctive kirats are fully the Quran. Yes, yeah, the modes of recitation. Uh huh. Modes of recitation. Yes. But and what is? How does that link? Hold on one second. How does a mode of recitation link to what I asked you about the distinction and personhood? Essence yeah. that we are speaking about Jesus. I accused you. I made an accusation. I said that you're yeah, a polytheist. Yeah, we're polytheists. Yeah, I get it. And I was mm. about to give you the, my, what my reasons were, but then you came out with the whole Kirat stuff, which it didn't no, no, make. You gave an analogy which isn't analogous. I told you why. No, I because you do not derive your existence from the same essence of I. I told you why that's not the case, and I also gave you an analogy which you refused. Now I tell you why the modes of recitation no, 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 can I'm be analogous with, each, uh, with okay, the Trinity. Go on, go on. Okay, okay. So these modes. Let's just change these modes of recitation. To the persons of the Trinity. These persons are all fully God. They derive the existence from the same essence. They have distinctions. Now let's link this back to the Qurat. The Qurat, they have distinctions in verses. They're all fully the Quran. Although they have distinctions, you count by division, so you get one Quran, several Qurats. Now, the reason why your uh, analogy of me and you having, you have a distinctive essence to I. See, so you cannot be, you can't say one human essence, two persons, or two distinctive persons. Listen, listen. I am very, I'm just simply saying this, right? Oh. John 17, verse 3 completely debunks your position. I told you. No, hold on. We allow told, me, allow me. You, you they need, shared that. You it, need to. Oh, it's sorry. Jesus affirming the deity finish, of the Father. Bro. Let me finish. In the book of Hebrews, let me finish. the Father confirms the deity Ish. of the Son. The Ish. Father prays to Jesus and calls Ish. himself God. Let me finish. The Father confirms the deity of the Son in the I book of Hebrews. To you, the same John way Jesus confirms the deity in John 17, verse 3. Nothing wrong with that. You, what you've done, you've done a remix version, right? What you've done, when I asked you, is the Holy Spirit and the Son the only, is the Father, so it's the Holy, the Son and the Holy Spirit, the only true God. You initially said no, but I then what you did, I... hold on, hold on. You can accuse me of doing such, but... but you should allow me to finish, because then it might look like an accusation if you don't let me finish. Uh -huh. Right? So you initially said no, but then what he affirmed is that yes, the Holy, the Holy Spirit is the only true God, even though Jesus both contradicts your position. Yeah. Jesus contradicts yeah. your position yeah. by saying that the Father is the only true God. Then what you did is came out with an explanation as, as to how the Holy Spirit can be all, the only be true, true God. I asked you, okay, show me in the New Testament where Jesus said that the Father is the only true God. Yeah, so that I, the I, Holy I, Spirit, yeah, hold on, yeah, that yeah, the Holy so Spirit is the only true God. Answer this one. Nowhere yeah, does no. it say this. Nowhere. Then what you did is that you are now appealed to authority, right? You. I've accused me of committing a fallacy. Which authority do we appeal to? 
with regards to um, the hour, right? Okay. You've appealed to well, authority. To the Greek. You've the uh, Greek. You've appealed. It means Oiden. Okay, you, you need to show me that. Yeah, okay. I'm still waiting for it. Okay. Right? You have appealed to the Greek. Okay, fine. So you need to show me where it says this. But the okay. verse itself says, the verse itself says that no one knows the hour. So okay. either the verse is completely wrong, right? Yeah, can you talk about the Kirat analogy I gave you? Okay, I want to I want to refute your point. How, it's a silly the same you way, the, the you same still way. Have to show so me. you're telling me? No, I I literally explained to you how this is analogous, and then you just committed the poisoning the wealth no, fallacy. You're you, saying you will not respond to it because it's silly. You, tell me, you how have it's silly. you have committed the fallacy. And I'll tell you. No, what. no. Okay. Can, 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 I don't finish. care. No, I have accused finish. you first. I have accused you first. You've committed. No, you haven't. No, you've committed. You are. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Let me say. Okay. So firstly, the authority is the original Greek manuscript we've been talking about scripture this whole discussion so that's not appealing to authority second of all you've committed the poison in the will fallacy you're saying you're not responding to the analogy because it's silly you haven't given a justification for it I told you how it's analogous these curates are different modes of okay, let me respond. replace the mode with the person you they cannot have you cannot I want to that something. you cannot give an example about the different modes of recitation when we are speaking about the essence energies of God right when we're talking about the different modes of recitation, and I was going to give an example that you seem to not wanted to know when I was quoting where it said Maliki Omidin, owner of the day of judgment. It's the one Quran day. Wait, wait, hold on one second, see what I mean? And then you cut me off and then you say, oh, well, I'm not responding, right? So, giving an example about different modes of recitation is not the same example we're talking about the essence of God. Now, I did come up with an accusation. You said, you are accusing me of, of being a polytheist. Yes, I'm accusing you of being a polytheist. And I'll tell you why. And then you cut me off at that point, right? Mm. I was going to point to John 1 1 to prove that you're a polytheist. To prove to you that you're a okay, polytheist. Go for it. Right. So in John 1 1, it says, in Adeke in Hologos, right? In the beginning was the word, yep. right? Ke Logos on Koston Theos. Theos, yeah. And the word was with God. Yep. Ke Theos in Hologos. Right, so it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. So from the Greek lexical meaning, ke logos on poston theo means that the word was with God. So who was with, who was with the word in the beginning? It you was, tell me. Okay, because we and believe because we believe in three persons, three hypostases within the Godhead. I'm not denying so that. because I'm not denying when it says he was with the Father, you, yes, he was eternally you with you the Father. Believe in two on gods. the throne with the Father, Jesus says. He gives us the authority to sit on the throne that he sits with the Father. So there is one throne and there is three hypostases within the Godhead where the Father is distinct, the Son is distinct and the Holy Spirit is distinct. But they are one in Godhead. So like in terms of like the question you gave, you've cut off where it says and the Word was with God and the Word is God. I already said that. No, you said, you just said the Word. Let me repeat it. I said, I said, in Adeke in Hologos, I'm quoting it in Greek. Yeah. Ke Logos on Poston Theon. And the word was with God. Again, I'm not denying that. Okay. It's with and God. it says, Ke Theos. The Father's called Theos as well. Oh my God. Let me finish, man. The Father's called Theos. Relax. Right. I'll take some water or something. Right. What I am saying is that it says, And the word was with God. And the word was God. Right. So I'm asking you, in the beginning, in the beginning, Mm. I'm not denying the fact that he says, and the word was God. Yeah. I'm not, not denying that. What I'm asking. Intermediate assessment. So brother, so, yeah, I, I know what you're trying to say. Right. We believe in three persons, Do but they share that, that one the nature of the divine nature. Yes or no? Two persons which were all God. But they are distinct persons. Wait, it gave you. Take care of they are. They share the same nature, though. There's not two separate divinities, not three separate divinities. They share that one same divinity. Wait, wait, it's wait, the wait. divine essence. That's what they wait, share. Wait, wait, wait. Let's let's do a live practical example of this. Hamza is with Thomas. Do you derive your same essence of existence? Wait, wait, hold on one second. Do you? No, hold on. Let me let me give an example. Right. Hamza is with Thomas, and Thomas is with Ish. Are you all one? Are we all three divine? Are you all of the same existent essence? Do you derive your existence from one human essence? Yes or no? Are we three separate persons? We are just yes, yeah, separate. There you go. Yeah. No. Right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No. You're jumping. You just proved my point. No. 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 
distinct. No, yes. we're separate because. Well, but you shared you one nature. No. You shared that same Thomas, nature. Think you yeah. One yeah, human nature, speak. Hamza. You're not no, you're, you're Hamza, you shared that one same human nature. And when these are three distinct persons, but they shared that one same divine nature, making them one God in being. If we derived our existence from the same essence, we don't. That's why we're separate. Thomas, you're paying worse semantics. If we I said not, you, we count by Thomas, division. Thomas, we count by division. There's no Thomas, division within the Thomas, Trinity. If I said in the beginning was Hamza, and Hamza was with Thomas, mm. and Hamza became Thomas. No, is, and it also says wait, God. Wait, wait. God's a flasic designator. Before I became, wait, hold on, hold on. The identifier of God is that the divine essence. Okay. Sorry, what are you asking? The, the, the identifier of God. That's the divine essence, right? You would say what makes something God is its essence. Yes, yes. Sorry, God. Yeah, yeah. So when you say, if you derive your existence from the same essence, because it says in John 1, uh, 1 3 or whatever, that, cheers, that, the, that Jesus was God. He derives his existence from the same divine essence, right? So that makes him distinct, not separate. Distinction does not entail separation. Like you, like us human beings. I've proven to you from you the haven't. language itself. Look, we it are three persons, no, hold on, one but one nature. Wait, 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 wait. One human wait, nature. Wait, 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 Within wait, the Godhead, there's on. three different persons, but one divine nature. Yes, we don't believe in three separate confusion. divinities, but one divinity. And they share that one divinity, me, yes. divinity, divinity among the Godhead, making it, making them one God in being. I think we're going to have to call it a day. Uh, I appreciate it. What's it, oh, Thomas? Ish? Oh, you didn't miss me, man.